Happy July 4th, Saints. This is Sarah Beveridge. Today is July 4th, 2015. I wanted to share some things that the Lord has been showing me, a dream that He gave me, and uh, the message that was in the dream that He wanted me to share with His people. I haven't been able to um, do anything else until I got this message out. And so the Spirit has been pressing heavily upon me to do this, even though I'm just totally, um, I don't know, I just feel this heaviness and this oppression on me. I don't know what it is. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish if it's, you know, the, the enemy or if it's the Holy Spirit pressing. So um, anyway, I just pray I can get this out. So let me say a quick prayer. My dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Father, I ask that you would help me to get this message out as you have impressed it upon me, Lord, in my spirit as I've been studying the scriptures and listening to your spirit, Lord, quicken the word to me. I pray, Father, that you'll open up the spiritual eyes and the hearts of your people for those who have ears to hear what you're saying to the church in this hour. Lord, that they too would come in agreement to pray for your will and your purposes in the earth in these last days. Thank you, Father, for the glory of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So in this dream on June 29, 2015, I dreamed that I was in a town called Alta Vista. Alta Vista means a view from above. So this dream is talking about God's point of view. And so I was driving on the main stream of Alta Vista, okay, God's point of view. And I knew that there was a woman who was moving there whose name was Nona. Well, Nona, I believe, represents the Holy Spirit because Nona means nine or ninth. There are nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. So you have to re remember that in dreams they're very symbolic. One thing represents another just as in the parables of Jesus. As you know, you know, the Lord hides spiritual truth from the carnal mind and that's why he uses this type of language. It's, you know, it's taken me some time to get used to it because a lot of it seems like a lot of foolishness but it's the way God speaks. So for those with ears to hear. So the Holy Spirit basically was moving into this town is what the message was. Now in the town I saw buildings and the buildings looked like this. They were you know, crumbled, falling down, they looked um, just just like this. Except they were just row after row of building like this. And then I got to another part of the town where the buildings were like, there was a building like this and I believe there were other buildings and they were being rebuilt. And there was, you know, new foundations being poured and construction was going on and they were built, being built on the side of a hill which I knew in my spirit represented Mount Zion. And so this is talking about um, the scripture that was quickened to me when I woke up from this dream which is Isaiah 58 12 because I heard in my spirit old waste places and this is of course you know spiritually speaking and I, Isaiah 58 is that chapter is about right and wrong fasting and worship and it's speaking of course specifically of Israel but since all scripture is for our instruction that scripture is saying to us um, you know in context the whole chapter is talking about true and false worship but this verse 12 says those from among you shall build the old waste places you shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of the streets to dwell in so that was the scripture I was given for the dream now as I've been studying this I of course I had to study Mount Zion because I knew that the hill represented Mount Zion and 
I knew that also Mount Zion had different meanings back in the uh, days of Israel. The Old Testament, there were, you know, it, it stood for Jerusalem, but it also had three different locations, and, you know, the locations kind of moved in time. And similarly, today, uh, Mount Zion is God's people. We're his holy temple. So uh, we are his dwelling place, as, as it says. And Mount Zion, if you look it up in the Strong's Concord Concordance in the, in the New Testament, it's called Sion. Same thing as Zion. It's the dwelling place of God. Interestingly, that it, w it means a parched place. Now, I don't have the full revelation and study on that. I'm not going to get into that in this particular video, but I know that there's something more to that. But Zion was the hill on which the higher and more ancient part of Jerusalem was built. And so basically, you know, now that hill is represents us because we're the dwelling place of God. And it says in 1 Peter uh, 2, 5 through 9, it says, you also as living stones are built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Okay, that's uh, 1 Peter 2 verse 5. I recommend you read that whole chapter. That is a very good chapter because it talks about how, of course, Jesus was a living stone. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the head, and we are the body, and we are all the little, uh, the living stones that make up uh, the rest of the temple of God or the dwelling place of God, which is Mount Zion. So the church is now Mount Zion. So further scriptures that point out that we are now the dwelling place of God, the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Praise God. And then Acts 7 uh, 47 through 50 But it was Solomon who built a house for him, meaning God, Verse 48, however, the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and earth is the footstool of my feet. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what place is there for my repose? Was it not my hand which made all these things? Of course, this is the Apostle Paul. He's speaking on, uh, I believe this is where he's speaking on Mars Hill. No, that's not the one. But anyway, this that is a um, um, maybe it's Stephen. Yes, yeah, so that was Stephen's speech before he was stoned in Acts chapter seven. So that's just more um, scriptural proof that we are the temple of God. And we are also Mount Zion, the dwelling place of God. Acts 17.24 The God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Praise God. So what the Lord was showing me with this dream is that the Holy Spirit is moving to rebuild the old waste places within his people, his body, his temple. Mount Zion, his Zion, his holy habitation, his people. Now, I don't have the full revelation of what this really means, but all, all I can tell you is that if the, the representation of the Holy Spirit, this Nona was moving there, this is a work of the Holy Spirit, of course, because we don't accomplish these things in our flesh. So the Holy Spirit is moving on those who are also going to be forerunners and principal players in doing uh, the work of the Lord in building and restoring. And I'd had a dream several months ago, maybe actually a year ago now, how God was moving to restore the foundations. I talk about that dream in the book that the Lord gave me to write, My God and Yours, Jesus Christ, a letter to my brethren. And that dream was very significant because it showed that the Lord is, uh, you know, he's, he's trying to uh, do something here. You know, he, 
says that he is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle, without a blemish, without a wrinkle. The Word of God says that. I didn't say that. The Word says that. And so people who are dwelling on the finished work of the cross, which it is finished, Jesus finished his work, but we have not finished ours. We're not finished yet. We are still being, we're being restored and built up here. This is what the Lord is showing me. Now this has nothing to do with your salvation, which is by grace through your faith. We're talking about sanctification here, the work of the Holy Spirit. I talk a lot about this in the book the Lord gave me to write also. You can't accomplish this stuff in your flesh. It, it's impossible. It, it's a work of the Holy Spirit. And the part that we play in it is to cooperate and to obey. And how you can think about this, and I always tell people this who contact me about it, who, you know, feel like they're not good enough or they're under condemnation, which is not from God, you know, that's the devil, but they're definitely under conviction, they, they're feeling pressed. Well, that pressing feeling is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit pushes us onto perfection, onto the fullness of Christ, onto the full measure of the stature of Christ in us. If the work that we do is finished at the finished work of Christ, then there's a whole lot of scriptures that have to be removed from the Bible. But what I tell people is remember your history with the Lord. Remember what he's brought you through and what he's done for you. Remember how you were before you were born again and how far you've come since then. And now, the, and now the, the challenge for you is to keep going, to keep running the race, as Paul said. To press on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Does that sound like, a, you know, it's finished? Yeah, the work of the cross, Jesus' work is finished. But not our work, not what he's doing in us. Rightly divide the word of truth, saints. Don't let people comfort you in your sin. God says to repent, to let the Holy Spirit help you and to heal you. Pray. Ask Him to come and finish the work that He started in you. He promises that He'll do that. It is a, do you know that is a promise of God? It's in the book of Philippians. I can't remember the exact verse right now. I don't have it queued up. But he says that he's going to finish the work that he started in you. Allow him to do it. And this is what the Lord is talking to me about in this dream. And, you know, I just get very disappointed when I see uh, people on YouTube who are comforting people in their sins and are not encouraging them to go on with the Lord. As I talked about in a previous video, how the river flowing from the temple in Ezekiel 47 where Ezekiel first goes in uh, the river up to his ankles that's the type of salvation then he goes in up to his knees that means you know you're venturing further into sanctification then he goes in up to his hips that means you're starting to walk in the spirit and then he went all the way in he was completely immersed in that river which is the Holy Spirit which is Christ which is a fullness of God the fullness of Christ in us that's what we're called to do now in this life and so I take issue with people on YouTube who are telling people oh it's okay you're never gonna be perfect no we we may not ever be as perfect as Christ but he told us to be perfect because your Father in Heaven is perfect. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of scriptures that would have to be taken out of the Bible if we just stop at the work of the cross. Your salvation and your justification is only the beginning of the story. 
So keep going. Remember your history with the Lord and keep going and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way with you because he's trying to rebuild the waste places in his people, his holy habitation. It's a mess. The church is a mess. And, you know, and people who say, oh, we're never going to be good enough. We're never going to be perfect. We're never going to be ready. I mean, stop it. That's not what God says. That's not what he's telling me. He's trying to get his people ready. I mean, we're waiting for Jesus, and Jesus is waiting for us. But you're not going to do it in your flesh. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to move. The Holy Spirit is going to do it. And he's raising up people like me and others, as many others, who are telling you to go on with the Lord, to press on toward your high calling. Keep going. Remember your history with the Lord and what he's done for you and keep going and allow him to bring about the fullness of what he has for you. That's his will for his people. Like I said, there's a whole lot of scriptures that would have to be removed from the Bible if that weren't true. There is a high calling. And and we see that the the apostles uh, you know, especially Paul, I mean, they were constantly pressing the saints to go on. Read the Word of God. It comes across very clear to me that they were pressing. They were, they were um, teaching them about being perfected. That was the goal. That is our goal. It's not done in the flesh, though. I have to keep repeating that because I know that there are people who are going, oh, we're never going to be good enough, blah, blah, blah. Read the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will do it. You watch. So God bless you in Maranatha. I pray that for those with ears to hear, will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour.